As King Agamemnon forces the Greek kingdoms into a loose alliance, only Thessaly remains untouched. Therefore, Agamemnon and the King of Thessaly meet in the middle of a battle to discuss the upcoming war. To stop further bloodshed, Agamemnon proposes a face-off between two of their best fighters. Agreeing with him, the King of Thessaly summons an eight-foot-tall warrior by the name of Bogarius. On the other hand, Agamemnon calls upon Achilles, a brave Greek warrior who has helped Agamemnon win many battles. Achilles is reluctant to engage in combat since he doesn't like Agamemnon very much. But the captain persuades him by telling him that by winning just one battle, he will be able to save hundreds of soldiers and prevent war. He eventually agrees to fight, but Achilles immediately kills Bogarius with a single strike of his sword. Following that, Thessaly's army surrenders under the command of King Agamemnon, effectively ending the war there and then. Next, we see Prince Hector of Troy and his brother Paris celebrating the peace offerings with King Menelaus of Sparta. During their stay in the kingdom, Paris begins a romantic relationship with Queen Helen, who is the wife of King Menelaus. The two speak upstairs during the celebration and become intimate with each other. Hector, who disapproves of the affair, cautions Paris that he does not want to jeopardize the peace that their father fought so hard to establish. The following day, as they're returning to Troy, Paris tells Hector that he snuck Helen into the ship. Seeing this, Hector gets very angry and decides to send Helen back, fearing that it might lead to a war. But Paris persuades him to continue their trip to Troy, arguing that he cannot abandon her now. When Menelaus finds out that his wife has disappeared, he meets with his brother Agamemnon and asks him for his help in capturing Troy to take revenge. Agamemnon also agrees because he understands that capturing Troy will give him the authority over the Aegean Sea and also increase his strength. He discusses his plan with his troops, who tell him that Troy has never been conquered before. Agamemnon also understands that Achilles will be necessary to help him win the battle as he's the greatest warrior in Greece. But the problem is, Achilles is not someone who is easily persuaded. Troy is a movie that portrays the battle between the ancient kingdoms of Troy and Sparta. While visiting Menelaus, Paris falls for his wife Helen and takes her back to Troy. Menelaus' brother, King Agamemnon, has already defeated every army in Greece. And this time, he uses his brother's fury as a pretext to declare war against Troy, the last kingdom preventing his control over the Aegean Sea. Grab a snack and get comfy as we take you through this epic story. The next day, Agamemnon sends Odysseus, king of Ithaca, to convince Achilles to join the war. Since Odysseus is also one of Achilles' closest friends, he approaches Achilles and his younger cousin Patroclus to convince them to fight alongside him and promises them fame and glory. Unable to decide, Achilles visits his mother and asks for her advice. She encourages him to fight the battle by telling him that even though he might never return, the world will remember him as a hero and that his name will be written in the history books forever. Meanwhile, Paris and Hector reach Troy with Helen and introduce her to their father, King Priam. Immediately, he praises Helen's beauty and welcomes her to the realm. A celebration is then held by the king to mark his son's safe return. Later, Hector goes to his father and tells him about the danger that is coming and pleads with him to send Helen back. But his father claims that it's too late for that now and declares that he's ready to go to war to protect his son. Later that night, Paris suggests to Helen that they leave together so that Menelaus won't find them. But Helen refuses to leave, saying that Menelaus will burn Troy to the ground regardless if they find her or not. Over the following few days, the citizens of Troy begin to hone their weapons and get ready for battle. One day, an emergency alarm rings and Hector sees a large number of the Greek fleet coming toward them. As the fleet draws near the shore, Menelaus notices that Achilles has already started to take the lead with his ship. Achilles' cousin Patroclus wants to take part in the fight, but Achilles orders him to guard the ship instead, saying he's not fully trained. Meanwhile, Hector, who is also one of the most skilled warriors, gets ready for a counterattack and gives the order to bring the citizens inside the city walls. As soon as they're on the ground, Achilles and his army of Myrmidons form a formation to kill the archers and head toward the Apollo Temple. Despite Hector's best efforts, Achilles manages to overpower his troops. Soon after, Hector shows up at the temple and demands that Achilles fight him solo. But Achilles tells him to leave and return the next day. As Achilles conquers in his first battle, the Greek army starts chanting his name. This enrages King Agamemnon and Menelaus as they feel it could undermine their authority. Later, the captain of the Myrmidons informs Achilles about Hector's cousin and the priestess named Briseis, whom they've captured from the Apollo temple. When Achilles approaches her and tries to speak with her, she accuses him of killing the priestess and declares that God will exact revenge on him. 
Now, Agamemnon is praised for the victory at Troy's beach, which was actually achieved by Achilles. On the other hand, Odysseus counsels Achilles to remain composed and ignore the king's politics. As Achilles and the king argue over who deserves the credit for the victory, Agamemnon brings Briseis and says that he'll have his way with her. Achilles becomes enraged and tries to fight, but Briseis stops him and begs him not to kill anyone, stating that there have already been enough deaths today. Achilles is fuming at this and goes back to his camp, deciding not to help Agamemnon until he apologizes to him. In the meantime, a meeting is held in Troy to plan the next phase of the war. There's a disagreement because some men believe they should give Helen back to Menelaus, while others support continuing the war. Seeing the tense situation, Paris steps up and decides that he will duel King Menelaus and also expresses regret to his father for starting the war. However, his father doesn't hold it against him and gives him the sword of Troy to fight against Menelaus. Later that night, Hector catches Helen trying to leave and stops her. She believes that she is to blame for the deaths of the Trojan soldiers and plans to return to Menelaus so that Paris won't have to die. But Hector convinces her otherwise, telling her that it's too late to ask for forgiveness and sends her back. The next morning, the commander informs Achilles that the armies have begun to march toward the city, but he refuses to go and orders his men to remain behind unless Agamemnon apologizes to him. Then, the Troy army is on guard at the gate as the Greek army approaches from a distance. As Helen observes the assembled armies from a distance, she apologizes to King Prem for starting the war, but he assures her that it's not her fault and invites her to sit down. Meanwhile, Agamemnon offers them one final opportunity to surrender, but Hector rejects him, saying that Trojans will never accept his rule. Then, Paris challenges Menelaus to a duel, pledging that the winner will take Helen home and immediately put an end to the war. Menelaus also accepts the offer to claim the city no matter what happens. Moments later, Menelaus and Paris start the duel, but Paris gets hurt soon after and immediately crawls to Hector. The pact is now broken, and Menelaus asks Hector to let him kill Paris, but Hector immediately kills Menelaus to save his brother. This angers Agamemnon, who then declares war and orders the Greek army to march forward. Hector boldly fights in the battle and ends up killing the Greek king Ajax, while the Trojan army is helped by the archers from the city walls. On the other hand, since Achilles and his army didn't help this time, the Greek forces become weak and are routed with heavy losses, forcing them to retreat. After suffering such a defeat in the fight, Odysseus argues with Agamemnon and requests that he apologize to Achilles and invite him to join in the battle. He also states that in return for the support, Achilles might want Briseis back. But it turns out that Agamemnon has given Briseis back to the soldiers for their amusement. While the soldiers continue to pass her around, Achilles shows up and takes her back to his camp where he feeds her and cleans her up. Later that evening, Briseis tries to kill Achilles while he sleeps, but instead, the two fall in love and end up sleeping with each other. The next morning, Achilles decides to leave for Troy and orders the captain to prepare the ship, but Odysseus tries to persuade him to stay. Similarly, Patroclus also asks him to stay since he believes returning home would mean betraying the Greeks, but Achilles tells him to prepare to sail home the following morning. Back at Troy, the Trojans plan to retake the Troy beach and prepare for another attack when the Greeks are at their weakest. However, Hector disagrees with this and warns them not to underestimate the Greeks. Regardless, King Priam continues to give orders for the army to get ready for the upcoming battle. In the middle of the night, Hector and his armies attack the Greeks by burning them in their camps with coordinated fireballs. A fight breaks out and initially, it appears like the Greeks are losing it, but the army of Myrmidons shows up just then and starts fighting. Following the fights, Hector kills a man who he mistakenly thinks is Achilles, only to find out that it was Patroclus who had put on Achilles' armor and weapons. Later, Achilles' commander returns to the camp and explains how they mistook Patroclus for him and went to the battle behind him. This breaks Achilles' heart, and he swears revenge on Hector for his cousin's death. On the other hand, Hector believes that he will die soon and leads his wife to the tunnel, telling her to escape the city with their son if the Greeks come to attack. Then, Achilles burns the body of his cousin, while Agamemnon is pleased with how things turned out. The next morning, Achilles arrives outside Troy and screams at Hector to fight with him. As Hector gets ready to leave, King Priam praises him for being the best son and offers his blessings. After saying goodbye to his family, Hector goes outside and asks Achilles to agree to uphold the funeral rites if either of them dies, but Achilles refuses him. The fight begins and both of them fight bravely, but Achilles eventually kills Hector. He then drags his dead body back to the beach as Hector's family looks on helplessly. Later that night, 
King Priam shows up at Achilles' camp and begs him to return the dead body of Hector so that he can be properly buried. Filled with shame and regrets over how things turned out, Achilles agrees and sobs over the dead body of Hector before returning it. As Priam informs him that the funeral ritual lasts for 12 days, Achilles says that he will give him 12 days of peace before he starts fighting again. After finding out that Achilles has promised 12 days of truce, Agamemnon gets enraged and plans to attack right away as the Trojan soldiers will be vulnerable now without their leader. However, Odysseus is fed up with the entire situation and devises a final strategy to end the battle. Twelve days later, when King Priam and his men step outside the city walls, they discover that a plague has killed many Greek soldiers. The remaining have sailed home and left a wooden horse as a peace offering. Although Paris and the commander plan to burn the horse to the ground, the priest views it as a trophy of victory and advises bringing it inside. Later that evening, the Greeks who had been hiding inside the enormous horse come out and start killing the sleeping guards, and open the gate of Troy to let the Greek army in. Now the city of Troy turns into a state of total chaos as the Greek soldiers start to burn the city down and kill everyone, including the women and children. On the other hand, Achilles is frantically running from place to place to meet Briseis one last time. When King Priam learns of the attack, it's too late for him to take action. Now he's left helpless as Troy is destroyed in front of his very eyes. On the other hand, Hector's wife follows his advice and leads the people outside through the city's tunnel. However, Paris decides to stay in the city and protect his father. He gives the Trojan sword to one of his cousins, asking him to guard the sword and look for a new home for the Trojans. In the meantime, Agamemnon stabs King Priam to death and captures Briseis to serve as his slave. However, Briseis uses a hidden knife to stab Agamemnon in the neck and ends up killing him. Then, the Greek soldiers try to attack her, but they are killed by Achilles, who has come through the city to meet her. The reunion is short-lived as Paris shows up and shoots Achilles with arrows, while Briseis begs him to stop. Achilles tries to fight back, but the arrow in his foot slows him down, and he's eventually shot to death. As he takes his last breath, he asks Briseis to leave the city, saying that everything will be okay. The Greek army finds him shortly after, horrified to see their greatest warrior lying dead. The movie ends as Troy is finally conquered by the Greeks and a funeral is held for Achilles. Odysseus cremates his body and honors the great warriors whose names will live on in history for fighting in the Trojan War. Did you find this story interesting? If you did, check out this video now!